D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So I'm coming to you today with this story about the Arrowverse creator, Mark Guggenheim. And it looks like he has some regrets about making uh, the CW shows, uh, the DC shows. And I mean, and I can totally uh, sympathize with him. This came out yesterday um, and I had already gotten all my stories from his Sunday video, but I wanted to talk about this because I thought this was fascinating. I'm going to, this comes from the direct. I'm going to start in on this article right away so I can get through this, but I, I just want to, I'll give you my thoughts on it. So uh, it says, <clears throat> With Arrowverse coming to a close, the creator behind it all has revealed that in some respects, his time behind the wheel has felt like a waste of time. The Arrowverse was once a uh, thriving, interconnected, on-screen universe with story threads interweaving between multiple shows, Arrow, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, and Batwoman. Sadly, however, in its days are coming to a close. Thank God. It got really bad at the end, you guys. So bad. The signs were there long before it was official. Supergirl ended early with its sixth season and was followed by the cancellation of two other long-running DC comics shows on the CW. It turns out that after roughly a decade of having worked on this massive addition to the DC Comics legacy, the hard work was not bearing any fruit. And that's true because they said since they um, had taken over and since 2006, they hadn't made any money, like zero money. They were in debt. They were still in debt. In fact, um, the company that now has them, uh, Nexstar, I think it is, something like that, they actually took on their debt because they didn't... Um, they didn't have, uh, they didn't uh, want to pay for it, and they had all this debt and everything. Anyways, in a new blog post on his personal site, Arrowverse creator Mark Guggenheim got candid about how he can't help but feel he wasted his time working on the CW's many superhero shows. And good for him for being honest about it, but I agree. I mean, like his, like, I'm sorry, those shows got super bad towards the end, like so bad. Like, I'm sorry, like if you... Uh, if you liked those shows, good for you, but I don't see how. All right, so let's continue. For those not familiar with his work, the writer and producer co-created Stephen Amell's Arrow, where he then acted as showrunner for and writer for a handful of seasons and executive producer on the others. On top of that, he also wrote the Arrow versus Vixen, Legends of Tomorrow, and Supergirl, all of which he was also credited as executive producer. The piece starts out with Guggenheim sharing how back then, back when the CW's big crossover event, Crisis on Infinite Earths, was being made, a friend of his claimed that his phone was going to ring off the hook. Uh, which apparently did not happen because uh, he's upset about this. Despite expectations, as he puts it, Guggenheim's phone did not, in fact, ring. The producer uh, open, uh, opened up, noting that the five-hour, six-show television event was a labor in every respect, having used every resource and connection at his disposal. Crisis on Infernurs made a significant impression on my psyche, was more than a labor of love. It was a labor in every respect and a project where I spent every ounce of capital I had amassed in developing DC Comics-related shows for Warner Brothers. Over an eight-year period, I called in every favor, I used every chit, I burned every bridge. I even spent $10,000 of my own money. He spent 10 grand of his own money. You know what they say when you have something, never put your own money into it. Never. And he did. Oh, man. And that and that crisis on Infinite Earths uh, crossover was not that good, you guys. It wasn't that great. Guggenheim went on to point out how his big crossover event mainstreamed the concept of an interconnected multiverse before the MCU got around to it. Years before Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness would mainstream the concept of an interconnected multiverse, Crisis brought together characters from the 1966 Batman television show, the 1989 Batman feature, the 1990 The Flash series, the Smallville series, Lucifer, Boom, Doom Patrol, Titan, Swamp Thing, and Green Lantern movie. Well, Speaking of Doom Patrol, I read, I think it was on Twitter, but don't quote me on that. I can't remember where I saw it, that they had, because the Doom Patrol people didn't want to appear, none of the people from Titans or Doom Patrol wanted to appear on this, this crappy event, or they couldn't afford it. I can't remember exactly. They just gave them footage of the unreleased um, 
finale from season one of Titans. And then they just added a red tint to it, you know, like a red glow. And I was like, man, uh, Swamp Thing, the Green Lantern movie, Superman Returns, Kingdom Come. The list goes on and on. Ezra Miller even reprised their uh, feature film role as Barry Allen to meet the Arrow versus Incarnation played by Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin's uh, going to be in that um, that Flash movie from what I hear. Um, plus, he's in the trailer. If you look, you can see him in the trailer. They ruined that cameo. Uh, they're stupid over there. Um, he then clarified his intention with these words, isn't to belittle crisis on infinite earth in the slightest and that he feels deeply grateful for the response from fans yeah but fan response doesn't you know pay the bills honey yes and i don't mean to be little crisis on infinite earth in the slightest fans loved what we did did they though there were tweets so and were uh, there were posts there were memes there was much discussion all of which I was and remain deeply grateful for. I mean, of course, you don't want to diss on the fans, but at the same time, so what? I mean, like I said before, tweets don't pay the bills. Working on these shows, we always reminded ourselves that the opposite of love was not hate. It was uh, ep- empathy, gosh, apathy, and no matter what, there was never any apathy. Putting it bluntly, G- Guggenheim declared that on a career level, he really wasted his time on the Arrowverse, which is so true. And that crap went woke real quick. And I know you're going to be all like, uh, woke and everything, but I'm sorry. Woke is um, is a state of awareness only achieved by those dumb enough to find injustice in everything except their own behavior. And that's what the Arrowverse turned into. I mean, if you go watch, ba- don't go watch Batwoman. Watch my reviews for Batwoman or that guy Heels versus Babyface guy. Uh, I don't remember his name. What's his name? Uh, the bald guy. He does some pretty good ones too. Um, And then there was some other stuff which basically boiled down to me lamenting that although working for DC had been creatively fulfilling, it involved a lot of adversity, challenges, and personal sacrifices, none of which seemed to have occurred any professional benefit. Simply put, the Arrowverse hasn't led to any other gigs, so it feels, at least on a career level, that it was really a waste of my time. So true, true. Uh, so it says, <clears throat> for those who enjoyed Arrow versus Christ on an Infinite Earth event, make sure to savor that experience because nothing like it is going to uh, be happening anytime soon. While the uh, reaction to the many CW shows has been mixed over the years, knowing it'll all be done is likely a strange feeling to for many. It's one of those things that one expects to never actually come to an end, like the MCU or even Doctor Who. It's certainly it's certainly easy to understand why Mark Guggenheim feels this way. After 10 years of grueling hard work, he feels like it's gotten him nowhere. While his career might not have expanded thanks to the Arrowverse, some other creatives behind the scenes got work elsewhere. One of the most recent examples would be Bill Blankenship and uh, Garney Godfrey, who are now both on Devil or Daredevil Born Again. And I did a video on that, or maybe I did. Uh, I can't remember. That's going to be terrible because these Batwoman writers suck, man. Um, or they worked on, I think one of them worked on it. I can't remember, but they're just, it just sucks. They suck. On the other side of the coin, Guggenheim fellow producer Greg Berlanti is supposedly done with his work on DC superhero shows. To witness the final hours of the Arrowverse as Barry Allen takes on Red Death, make sure to... Nobody's... Yeah, those those yeah, those suck. Because it's it's just Batwoman. And uh, and Batwoman suck balls. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I don't... I, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I'm not sad that this is coming to an end. Because if you watched any of those shows, I mean, Supergirl got ridiculous. You remember when that one part where like parasite goes to to grab her sister alex and she's like "Uh uh-uh not without consent and or no touching without consent and i'm like oh get the hell out of here with that nonsense and so and then all the shows got they got cheap they got really really cheap and they got bad like the writing was terrible it was all about oh you know what it was all about what uh what what uh what's your sexuality and and what's what what race are you and everything and it just got so woke and i know everybody hates that term but you know what that means when you say it now. So I think that that's the best way to describe it. I mean, I don't like using it in terms of like, but I use it where it's appropriate. And here's where it's appropriate. This, These shows got so bad 
that, you know, it was just, it wasn't even worth even, even mentioning in conversation because they're so stupid. And they start out so strong and so good. And like, they just went downhill. Um, and it's because you bring on these people that don't, that don't know how to write. They don't know how to take criticism with their writing. Um, and they don't know how to throw out their first idea and grab onto the second one and then throw that one out and then grab your third one because that's usually the best one. I mean, it's just, you know, it was just a lot of people saying how great they were in the writer's room and then writing really bad material for these actors to perform. So, I mean, good for him, um, you know, speaking out and being honest about it. And I feel bad that he didn't get anything from it. And it looks like other people did. They just benefited from his, his work and his money, man, 10 grand. Oh man. If I had 10 grand, I wouldn't be spending it on a show. I'll tell you that. Uh, I try to get somebody else's money. All right, you guys, that's all I got for you with this video, but tell me what you guys think about this. Uh, did you guys like the Arrowverse, especially towards the end? Um, do you feel bad for Mark Guggenheim or not really? Cause he kind of like, you know, stepped in himself. Did you like the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, crossover? I thought it was like, I mean, medium at best, but you know, you could have loved it. And uh, what was your favorite uh, Arrowverse show? I mean, for me, it was Arrow, but like only the first two to three seasons. Uh, then after that, it just sucked. Uh, but yeah, tell me what you guys think about all this. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you need my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next video. You guys have a good day. Bye.